On August 20, 1978, Janet Parker had been sick with a mysterious disease for over a week, but none of the doctors she saw could accurately diagnose her condition and why she was getting worse. Janet had a fever of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, complained of aching limbs, and had blisters all over her body. She was rushed to isolation at the infectious disease ward of Catherine de Barnes Hospital near Birmingham, England. Professor Henry Bedson of the University of Birmingham Medical School received a sample from one of Janet's blisters and looked at it with an electron microscope. He was shocked and horrified to see the brick-shaped viruses that were a clear sign of the disease raging through her body. The virus had been eradicated worldwide except for a handful of research laboratories, one of which Professor Betson ran at the University of Birmingham, where Janet worked as a photographer. Her infection must have come from this lab, he must have thought. She was infected with the greatest mass murderer in human history, smallpox. A series of events would unfold that would lead to the death of three people, as well as a mass vaccination and quarantine effort in England. Even today, the mystery of how an English photographer could catch a virus that was eradicated around the world remains. This is the story of Janet Parker, the last victim of smallpox. I hope you watched this entire video because research into this disease and other dangerous diseases continues. Having an informed public will help us discuss the risks and if enough is being done to mitigate it. Smallpox is a highly transmissible and deadly virus. It is in the same family as chickenpox and is spread through physical contact and from the respiration of infectious individuals. The disease has been around for 3,000 years and since 1900, Smallpox is thought to have killed approximately 300 million people. The most common form has a mortality rate of 30%. Linda Sutherland, one of the two nurses who would take care of Janet, said of her condition, by the end of the first week, the spot over Janet's right eye had ruptured, making it hard for her to read. Her hair would get stuck in the gunked up sores of her shoulder blades. Janet had a mirror and would use it to scrutinize her face. She would look at her arms and the palms of her hands, taking in the full horror. Over the following days, Janet Parker grew weaker. By the third week in the hospital, she had lost sight in both eyes, developed pneumonia, and her face was caked with scabs. She died September 11, 1978, one month after symptoms started. On September 1st, 10 days after diagnosing Janet with smallpox, Professor Harry Betson had cut his throat. His life support was removed five days later and he passed away. Professor Betson ran a smallpox research lab at the University of Birmingham Medical School where Janet Parker had worked as a photographer. As soon as smallpox had been confirmed, rumors began to circulate in the press that Betson's lab was to blame. Quarantined at home with his wife and their three children, he was constantly questioned by journalists waiting on his front lawn. Professor Betson left a suicide note in his shed, apologizing for the misplaced trust which so many of my friends and colleagues have placed in me and my work. His research into smallpox in 1978 was authorized by the World Health Organization, or WHO. They had given him a six-month deadline to complete all work, but then Janet became infected. His research was driven by the concern about another pox virus jumping from animals to humans, so he wanted to find a better way to distinguish between smallpox strains and other viruses that could mimic it. Before the infection, WHO inspectors had examined the lab for safety and outside a few minor corrections, such as adding a shower, the lab was up to standards. Since the lab was going to close in six months, there was no funding to upgrade the lab. The government funded shooter report commissioned after the smallpox outbreak, found that Professor Betson had expedited his research to meet the deadline. He had 10 times more workload for his staff, which he could no longer supervise adequately because his administrative and teaching duties had increased. This meant more viral samples would be used and it was more than the WHO had authorized. Infection through the air or from contaminated materials may have become easier since more virus would be present. Furthermore, the report noted another safety issue revolving the researchers' removal of the virus from petri dishes outside of a safety cabinet, which is an enclosed work area with special airflow to prevent aerosolized contamination. This may have caused a greater likelihood 
for enough of the virus to become aerosolized and get into the ducts to infect Janet, and tests confirmed the possibility. On September 5th, 1978, two weeks after Janet was brought to the Catherine de Burr's hospital to be isolated, Janet's father died of a heart attack. He had also been quarantined at the same hospital. The stress of his daughter's condition and his own quarantine possibly triggered the heart attack. How Janet Parker acquired the disease is still a mystery. The shooter report made it clear that she must have gotten the virus from the University of Birmingham Medical School while she was working as a photographer there. Specifically, the source must have been Professor Betson's lab. The three pathways she could have acquired the virus. First, from contaminated air coming from ducts connecting Professor Betson's smallpox lab to the telephone room in her studio, where she would make calls to researchers regarding photo requests. Although she was sharing her studio with another artist, she would use the telephone room nearly exclusively. The report stated the second possible source of infection was contaminated research material that she may have touched. As part of her job as a photographer for the school, researchers would give her lists of items to take photographs of. Perhaps one of these lists were contaminated. The third source could have been from contaminated persons with the virus on their hands or clothes. One researcher was known to have regular contact with Janet. There isn't widespread agreement on what the source of the infection was, and it's likely the mystery will remain forever. There's an important thing to note. We may wonder why only Janet was infected if the lab was contaminated. Part of the reason could be that those in direct contact with smallpox would get vaccinated every two years, so the resistance remained high. On the other hand, Janet may have reduced immunity because she had her smallpox vaccine 12 years before her infection. Immunity from smallpox vaccines is known to wane over time. An odd tragedy of the story is that Janet got the more severe version of the virus, variola major, which has a mortality rate of 30%. She was a member of the unlucky ones who had passed away from the virus. Immediately after Janet Parker was diagnosed, public health officials began a massive contact tracing effort to find, vaccinate, and quarantine anyone who could have been infected by her. In all, 500 people were identified around the Birmingham, England area to have been at risk, including her parents. Some countries even began requiring all English travelers have a smallpox vaccine. The effort resembled recent COVID-19 precautions. The only person Janet transmitted smallpox to was her mother who had a mild case since she was vaccinated as soon as Janet's diagnosis was made. She had been vaccinated in time. This is a success story of public health and a bit of luck as smallpox is transmissible several days after infection when pox marks form. Although there was a carrier of a highly contagious disease, contact tracing led to the vaccination and quarantine of 500 people, which mitigated the spread just to her mother. Before 1978, England had a history of two smallpox lab leaks. Eerily, one of those leaks occurred at the same university Janet worked, doing the same job in the same studio. Lessons were not learned, and this may have cost Janet Parker her life. In 1966, the University of Birmingham Medical School was studying smallpox. 23-year-old Tony McLellan, a photographer, was a victim this time. Typically, those infected by diseases in a bio lab are researchers who are handling dangerous material. Like Janet, it's thought he may have caught the virus from touching contaminated material or contact with another person. This may have occurred as he was asking researchers what pictures they wanted to be taken and would receive a note with requests from them. Perhaps one of these lists had smallpox. It's odd that no one else at the university had this disease, considering it seemed to have been transferred in such an unbeknownst way. Once symptoms occurred, he went to a doctor who initially misdiagnosed the ailment. Smallpox in England at the time was rare, and usually carried by people who had recently come from developing nations, and most doctors were not experienced in its diagnosis. Unaware of his condition, he passed the disease to people in the community. It was not known there was a smallpox outbreak until an infected person saw a doctor who had experienced with smallpox, eight weeks later. Fortunately, Tony carried a mild version of smallpox and no one is known to have died from the outbreak. Unfortunately, the realization the disease spread from the lab was slow and lessons were not learned and were not implemented. 
It was thought it had come from an international traveler, which the photographer was not. He had a very social life and would interact with many people from different backgrounds, and this was initially thought to be the source of the virus. It wasn't until much later that the lab leak origin was found. The other leak occurred in 1973. This time, two people died. Two lab workers caught the virus at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. They were kept out of hospital for treatment and survived. However, they spread it to two visitors who passed away from the disease. In 1980, two years after Janet's death, the WHO declared the smallpox virus eradicated from the world except for research in highly controlled labs. Since the declaration, no other cases have occurred. Today, only two labs still have smallpox, the CDC in Atlanta and Vector in Russia. The US National Institute of Health states the purpose of keeping the virus is research for effective vaccines, drugs, and diagnostics for smallpox continues in the event it is used as a bioterror weapon. The University of Birmingham School of Medicine was brought to court for unsafe lab practices but the court cleared the University of Blame. What if smallpox sinks again? Are you worried? Should we get rid of smallpox once for all? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and share. If you want me to make more videos like this, let me know in the comments. I also have other videos about COVID, aliens, sleep paralysis, and more. Check out a video on sleep paralysis here.